Welcome to Echoes in the Gallery. I am your host, Susan L. Sistrunk. As an arts educator and professional artist, it is my privilege to bring you my first original podcast set in a series of volumes. Each episode will air weekly on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts. Tonight, in episode 22, Lejitas, our group arrives in Texas. Will they locate Tuturi and Sergei? Will the location of the diamonds be divulged? Let us step into the gallery and begin. Episode 22, Lejitas. Rachel screamed out in a blood-curdling torrent as the needle sank into her flesh. The reaction was not just from the pain. It stemmed from the knowledge that the poison meant for Jonathan had just been released into her body and she had a limited amount of time to get to the antidote before she died a very painful death. She doubled over and quickly took off her shoe and rotated the heel, opening a cylindrical compartment. Out fell a small syringe. Rachel quickly stabbed herself in the neck with the needle and sighed. Only when confident she would live did she look around at those staring in silence. Jonathan spoke first. You were going to kill me? After everything I have done for you? What about our plans? I thought you loved me. Jonathan felt the tears well in his eyes as he thought of how he had betrayed Gwen for this woman who had all along been planning his demise. Rachel caught her breath and thought fast. It's not like that, Jonathan. Really. The syringe wasn't meant for you. It was It was for an emergency situation in case we were in a tight spot. You have to believe me. I would never. Rachel's voice trailed off as she looked down and forced a tear from her left eye. She had had years of practice as a master manipulator. She looked up at Jonathan with pleading eyes and saw his face begin to soften, but Ivanov was having none of it. Enough! Ivanov shouted. Rachel, you are even more of a snake than I am. This fool, he gestured to Jonathan, would give you anything you desire just for a pleasing glance from you. Tell me where my diamonds are or I will rip you apart piece by piece. Rachel glared at Ivanov. You will probably do that anyway, so what incentive do I have to tell you? Before Ivanov could answer with the fury building in his veins, it was announced by the steward that they were landing. Ivanov gestured to his man who had replaced Yuri. When we land, take these two, pointing to Rachel and Jonathan, to a hotel. Keep them under guard. If they have to use the bathroom, I want them to need you to hand them the paper. Do you understand? Gwen couldn't help it and burst out laughing. Sorry, I have this laughter at inappropriate times thing I'm working on. Despite his rising temper, Ivanov smiled. I'm glad I didn't kill you, Gwen. You continuously surprise me. I like that. I'm glad you didn't kill me either. But Gwen knew that didn't mean he wouldn't kill her eventually. She must remain useful. I suggest you get your money back first, and then deal with these two in the diamonds. Maybe your man can put some pressure on them while we find Sergei and Taturia. Jonathan's eyes widened. Gwen was actually condoning Ivanov torturing them? Who was she? Where was the sweet college girl he had fallen in love with all those years ago? Eric looked out the window as they began to descend into Lahitas. The view of the Chizos Mountains was breathtaking. He had never been to Texas. The stories he had heard of everything from the plants to the weather trying to kill you hadn't exactly endeared him to traveling to the state. Gwen looked over his shoulder at the landscape. It's beautiful, isn't it? I've always loved it. You've been here before, Ivanov interjected. Yes, a long time ago. Gwen looked out the window silently, an indication the conversation was finished. It wasn't the time or the place to revisit her history with the Chihuahuan Desert. Time was short, and even Jonathan didn't know about the events she had experienced here. For all its beauty, this region was a damn dangerous place, and people died here very easily. 
Maybe that was why she wasn't as afraid of all the current events transpiring. Gwen had already died. There was no reason to be afraid of death. The plane had grown quiet at her last statement. The air was heavy with unspoken words. A few moments later, the plane landed, and the door opened. The group stepped out into the blast furnace of the desert. "'What kind of a fresh hell is this?' Jordan exclaimed, stepping into the oppressive heat. He was still wearing his sweater from San Francisco, and already looked miserable. He looked around the landscape of the Okatia cacti and mesquite brush framed by the mountains. Harsh wind blasted through his hair, carrying dust of the Big Bend. "'Ugh, I can't blame you for leaving here. I wouldn't be caught dead in a place like this.' Gwen and Eric looked at Jordan stoically, and Gwen lowered her sunglasses in Jordan's direction. "'Sorry, boss. Bad timing,' Jordan stammered. "'Enough of that,' Ivanov interjected. There was a long black Cadillac SUV waiting for them at the end of the runway. Once inside, Ivanov turned to Jordan. "'Hey, whiz kid, where are they?' "'There's a town not too far from here called Terlingua. It's right down the road.' Okay, by right down the road, I mean like 17 miles of really winding roads, so more like... Ivanov pulled out a gun and pointed it at Jordan's face. Kid, Texas is big. 17 miles is quite literally right down the road. Now let's go. When would this end? Jordan knew he was in so much trouble. Now Texas? Terlingua. Of course Terlingua. Gwen didn't realize that he had been here before as well. As a matter of fact, they had been here at the same time. He only hoped she didn't figure that out before they got out of this mess and back to San Francisco. It wouldn't work out well right now if she realized it was actually him who had sold her some of the paintings which went to Ivanov. Why hadn't he just stayed in San Francisco? This concludes episode 22 of Echoes in the Gallery. Join me, your host, Susan L. Sistrunk, next week for episode 23, Welcome to Terlingua. Until then, thank you for listening. Stay safe and love each other.